You spend all winter putting the miles in the swimming pool and then spring finally rolls around, you slip into your wetsuit, you head outdoors and you expect with that buoyancy and the fresh water and the fresh air, you're going to feel great. And then you swim slower. Mm. Well, if this is you, you're certainly not alone. And today we've got some suggestions as to where you might be going wrong and of course some tips as to how to swim faster in the open water. Now when we say you're not alone, we mean this is quite a common issue and in fact something I've experienced, I always put it down to me being ridiculously good at tumble turns and pushing off the wall, but well, there are many other potential reasons. Yeah, there are many obvious differences between the two and with that we have the clothing choices, as whether you go wetsuit versus non-wetsuit, you've got the water temperature, you've got walls versus no walls, you've got the black line that you would follow on the bottom of the swimming pool versus the course of an open water swimming route and then you've got the organized etiquette of lane swimming versus the free-for-all of open water swimming all of these will affect us with how you make the most of that change in the environment yeah so we're going to jump into all of those before we do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to gtn so you don't miss any of our videos all right then let's start with the stroke itself because this is probably one of the most common issues but also actually in theory, one of the more straightforward to fix. Yeah, starting with stroke rate. If you look at the top open water swimmers, you'll notice they have a faster stroke rate than the top distance pool swimmers. This is because in the pool, you have more time to do the perfect hand entry, extension, and then the perfect catch. Whereas in the open water, this needs to happen a little bit faster and you need to catch a little bit earlier. Yeah, there are more opportunities for your stroke to be disrupted in the open water, whether that's from other swimmers nearby colliding with you, the chop on the water, or in fact, having to just simply cycle in the open water, all of which are going to make a long, smooth pool stroke less effective in the open water. We actually want to make sure that we're eliminating any dead spots in the stroke and we're getting straight into that pull and the catch as quickly as possible, but obviously still a nice, strong catch and pull. Yeah, having a faster stroke rate also means that if you do, for some reason, miss a catch or a pull because you've come into some kind of obstruction, you're moving on to the next stroke that much quicker and therefore you're going to lose that much less momentum. Yeah, one final point on the stroke in the open water is that if you rather enjoy swimming in the open water and being one with nature, uh, you may just be simply too relaxed in the open water. We haven't got that continual reminder per length how fast you're going and therefore you just start slipping off into your own little world and therefore you want to make sure you're keeping it on it, staying on it and maybe if you are training in the open water you want to include some structured training in the open water with some fast intervals too. Yeah, put some effort in. Next up, kit. Now, your kit should be there to aid you and help you, but if you get it wrong, it could be slowing you down. Even your wetsuit with its added buoyancy. Now, the thing to note with your wetsuits is that they all created differently with different amounts of buoyancy in different areas to suit different swim styles. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that we see people making is that they are attracted to the top end wetsuits, which are typically actually designed for the top end swimmers with their natural kind of flat swim styles in the water. But if you're someone that's dragging your feet along the bottom of the swimming pool, well, you're actually going to need a wetsuit that's got more buoyancy in the hips and the legs, and therefore that suit actually isn't going to suit you. So make sure you get the right wetsuit for you, and once you've got that, then you want to focus on the fit. You want to make sure that your wetsuit isn't too tight and restricting movement or breathing, restricting the amount of movement in your arms and reach through your shoulders. And also, if it's too big, then it's going to let a lot of water in and drag. Yeah, and on that note, you also want to make sure you've got the right kit for the conditions because being too cold is definitely going to slow you down. You are going to get tense and you're going to definitely be swimming slower. So make sure you've got the right wetsuit for the conditions. If you need a thicker wetsuit for those colder conditions, then invest in one or maybe invest in a base layer and even a neoprene skull cap to keep your head warm. The next point links loosely to 
the kit, but also links back to the swim stroke. Swimming in a wetsuit does naturally affect your position and body position in the water. And as a result, actually helps to keep the legs afloat. So actually, you can almost let the wetsuit do the work, keeping the legs afloat and actually focus a little bit more energy on the arm, the pull, and maybe just focus on a two beat kick with more energy into the pull. Yeah, you may need to adjust your stroke a little bit for the wetsuit that you're wearing. And one final piece of kit, is the goggles. Those goggles that you're wearing in the pool and you can see the black line, but they're a bit old and a bit scratched, are probably not gonna serve you very well in the open water and they could be slowing you down. This goes back to the sighting we spoke about earlier. You need to be able to see where you're going. So make sure you've got the right goggles for open water, including the right tint if it's gonna be bright and sunny. And they'll definitely help you go and, faster. And not those old foggy pair. Yeah, pairs. exactly. That scratched up pair is just not gonna do it for open water. And finally, we have the mental aspects. Now, if you're a little bit like me and quite enjoy swimming in the open water, find it a little bit relaxing, well, you might find your pace starting to drop off at times as you're just enjoying yourself. But equally, you might find getting in the open water rather nerve-wracking and actually you end up wasting unnecessary energy through all that nervousness and anxiety. So if that is the case, I suggest just getting in the open water as much as you possibly can. Heading into the open water when perhaps other swimmers aren't around and just spending time in there as much practice as you possibly can and then also trying to swim with others too. Yeah. Obviously, if the conditions are unfavorable, there's chop or there's a current, you will be slower than the pool. And you simply have to accept that and adjust your expectations of pace when the conditions are like that. But if you do find that you're regularly uh, slower in the open water than in the pool, hopefully today we've given you some of the tips or tricks or identified some of the factors that may be leading to you being slower in the open water. And hopefully we've also given you some of the fixes. If we have, hit that thumbs up button. And thanks for watching and happy swimming.